This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, it is just about 6.53. Time to get you ready to take on your Tuesday here in the morning sprint. Destiny Richards is tracking new developments in vaccine distribution here in Washington. And Mark Peterson has some dense fog to talk about in the forecast. But first, we've been following some breaking news this morning. The fire west of the Nine Mile area. It's in the 14,800 block of Pine Bluff Road. This is a live look at the scene. You may be able to see off to your right there is the shop that caught fire. According to the fire department, the couple who owns the home woke up to a loud boom and then saw the shop on fire. They called 911 and they got out of the house. No injuries in that fire. All right, good morning, everyone. In our first alert weather, and by the way, that app is available at your app store. Just download it. You'll have it. Dense fog advisory, you would have seen that pop up there. Slippery roads and walkways, we want you to use caution. Sunny later on today, grab the sunglasses. It's going to be a colder weekend ahead. Currently, we do have very limited visibility along I-90 as you head west on 90, also on Highway 2 through Reardon and Davenport, and uh, Highway 2 heading up north to Newport. Vaccinate more people. Governor Jay Inslee announced yesterday that the state would move on to the next phase of its rollout plan, phase 1B. In this phase, people 65 and older are now eligible for a vaccine. People 50 and older with two or more generations in the home, like a grandparent and a grandchild, can now get it as well. That's who can get it, but what about where and how? Well, this is what we know. A vaccine site will be up and running by next week at the Spokane Arena. Doctors have plans to contact patients who are eligible, and you'll soon be able to find out information about where you can get vaccinated on the state's Face Finder app. This is definitely a lot of information to take in, and if you miss anything, we have all the latest COVID-19 vaccine info on KXLY.com. Washington State University students are heading back to class today, and before they can get into any buildings on campus, they have to get tested. The university is ramping up its safety precautions, hoping to minimize the spread of COVID. Now, all students have to get tested for COVID, and those who live on campus can't get their key card until they do so. Students and staff members will also have to fill out daily health checks. Here in Spokane, Gonzaga spring semester begins tomorrow. Spokane Public Schools current tax levy will expire at the end of this year, so district officials hope voters will pass a new one in just a few weeks. Spokane School Superintendent Dr. Adam Swinyard says he and his team are working hard to get things back to normal, but he says doing so will happen sooner if Spokane taxpayers pass another levy. You can read about what passing the levy would mean for you on KXLY.com. This afternoon, some Central Valley parents are planning to march for more to get their students in class more often. Earlier this month, Central Valley School District announced a phased-in learning plan that would bring middle and high school students back one day a week. Some parents, though, say that's just not enough. The group plans to march outside Central Valley High School from 2 to 3 and then in front of the district building from 3 to 4. A massive security force fortifies the nation's capital on the eve of the presidential inauguration. But today, the capital will take on a much different tone. In just hours, the president-elect's inaugural committee is inviting Americans across the country to come together for a national moment of unity to honor the nearly 400,000 lives lost to COVID-19. It'll be the first ever lighting of the Lincoln Memorial reflecting pool. This is a live look. Cities around the country are invited to join by illuminating iconic buildings, and ringing church bells. The memorial will take place at 2.30 our time, and you can watch it live on Biden's inaugural social media pages. Just miles away, organizers for Biden's inauguration finished setting up about 200,000 flags at the National Mall, representing all those people who will not be able to travel to D.C. for the ceremony. The field of flags is illuminated by 56 pillars of light, symbolizing America's states and territories. The lights were beamed into the sky for 46 seconds, a reference to Biden becoming the 46th president. Spokane Police Chief Craig Meidel had a statement for those concerned about potential Inauguration Day violence in our area. He writes, we have found neither planned activities nor verified threats against any entities in the Spokane region. Chief Meidel went on to say that because of the emotions around this upcoming inauguration, Spokane Police will follow up on any leads they get about possible violence. The first set of confirmation hearings for the president-elect's cabinet is set for today. Several Senate committees are holding meetings for confirmation considerations. This morning, we're learning Biden is nominating Dr. Rachel Levine to serve as assistant health secretary. She would make history as the first out transgender federal official to be confirmed by the Senate.
Coming up next on Good Morning America, an exclusive interview with the American teen who served time behind bars in the Cayman Islands for violating COVID quarantine. Skylar Max back in the U.S. and admitting she made a mistake. It's a story you'll see only on GMA. We'll be right back with a final check of weather.